we have this potential outfield situation on the table where you don't have enough jobs to go around. And, hey, does it mean Juan Yepes or Alec Burleson won't make the team? Well, they share DH. But the point is you you have too many outfielders to play regularly. Mm-hmm. Does that leave Alec Burleson uh, as the odd man out? Um, or do you keep him around because he's he's going to be long-term a better hitter than, a, than you know, quite a few of these guys? Um but everyone wants, as I, as always, everyone wants to set the set the lineup like right now, and it's just like, well, you know, if if you start Walker and O'Neill and Newtbar, what well, you know, Carlson's a fourth outfit. I thought they, I thought they loved him. I thought they were high on him. They didn't want to trade him. San Diego and other teams wanted him last summer. So. What's up with that? It's well. What's up with that is it's called competition. And if Dylan Carlson opens the season as the fourth outfielder, um, then the Cardinals are actually living up to the narrative that they said at the beginning of this, which is there was going to be a lot of competition in camp. There, I think there's going to be. There already is really good competition in the outfield. And I don't know. I don't know the exact date of the first game, regular season game. I know it's in early April to be at Bush Stadium, but uh, I, I just don't. This is nothing to worry about. And as, as I was saying earlier today, it's March 6th, and I personally don't feel like setting the roster like right now, today. A lot of these things will take care of themselves. Injuries, unfortunately, are part of baseball. And the the thing that I like and love is that the Cardinals have too many outfielders in that all these guys can't play as much as they'd like to, or maybe they won't even open the season here in St. Louis. They'll be in Memphis. So I think this is a really good thing. It's a positive thing. And uh, you should all view Dylan Carlson. If, if, if he is not technically one of the three starting outfielders going on the most regular basis, it doesn't mean he disappears. It doesn't mean he goes to Memphis. It doesn't mean, you know, you'll never see him again. The Cardinals have a pretty weak bench. and have, If you have a sw- – first of all, he'll start a lot of games. But if you have a switch hitting outfielder and he's shown that he can be better against right-handed pitching, and, again, that's a big if. Need to see a lot more of that. Um, he'll play a lot because it's not like Walker and O'Neal and Newt Barr are going to be out there every single day. I mean, people get banged up. They need days off. Maybe they miss two or three games. Four games, five games at most uh, to injuries. Like, in other words, you know, they're knocked out of the lineup for several days, you know, maybe a week. As long as it's nothing long term, it's okay. That's the that's the beauty of having a fourth outfielder who, you know, already in the major leagues has shown that he's got the talent. It's he's, it's just he's got to get stronger in his weakest area. Other than staying healthy, he's got to be strongest in his weakest area, which is uh, taking at bats against right-handed pitching. But to have him to use, and, and he can play all three spots, and he kills left-handed pitchers in his career, numbers are fantastic. Once again, my friends, I repeat, what exactly is the problem here? The problem was what I, – I mentioned this early in the show, but I feel compelled to do it again. The problem was in 2021 when uh, O'Neill got hurt just for a little bit in the opening month, but Harrison Bader got hurt and was out a long time. And the Cardinals, and even though Dylan Carlson, a rookie, did a nice job during that time, the Cardinals had to turn to Justin Williams and some other characters, and their all, their outfield offense as a group was among the bottom five in the major leagues. When Bader finally returned from that rib injury and O'Neill was able to stay in the lineup for uh, long periods of time, and he put together a fantastic season, to, earned him uh, – MVP votes, the Cardinals statistically were a top five outfield offensively once they were able to put their uh, starting outfield, on, you know, in the, that starting outfield intact and playing routinely. Once Beta returned, it was like ready, set, go. And they, they put up that outfield collectively just put up huge numbers. So that was derailed last year because of injuries, but here we are hopeful in before 2023 that things will be more settled in. And if things are more settled in and O'Neill bounces back, which I think he will, 
and Lars Newtbar is the real thing, which I think he is. Um, and Jordan Walker makes the club, and he will have to play a ton because there's no would be no reason to keep him here otherwise. To be able to to know that if you run into an issue, you you've got Dylan Carlson waiting over there in the dugout. I mean, I I I think I think that's a good spot. I think it's a sort of a calming influence, at least for me, to think about the Cardinals if if the injuries happen and hit the outfield. They not only have Carlson ready, and he'll be a big part of it anyway, but you have Burleson coming, you've got Yepes coming, you have Moises Gomez coming, you got um, – well, Donovan, don't forget, is going to play some in the outfield as well. So unlike 2021 – and and even 2022, the first half of 2021, and pretty much on and off last year when you had so many injuries. This year it's a little different, a lot different, because I think the Cardinals have plenty of backup. They have they have several guys that can step in uh, should they have an injury issue in the outfield. And that's, again, I repeat, I know I'm being redundant. I know I'm on your nerves. But how is that anything but a good thing? How is that anything but a positive thing? You know, now if you're if you're assuming it's going to be the wor- what, you know the worst case scenario, and that O'Neill can't be trusted, he'll be a bust. You know, uh, Newt Barr was a fluke that'll never last. You know, Walker's not ready. Oh, Carlson, forget about it. You're lucky if you can even trade him for anything now. You know, now if that's your mindset, I can't talk to you because um, that's pretty extreme and it's not going to happen. Now. Can you accuse me of being maybe too optimistic? Probably. But you notice when I talk about this, I keep talking about if there's injuries, if this bad thing happens, if they're, they really need some, someone to fit and step up in the outfield. My only point is I'm not saying all of these guys are all-stars, but what I'm saying is they have people in place – who may not be starting players right now because it's a pretty crowded outfield, they have people in place that greatly exceed what they have had in recent years for outfield reserve strength. That's all I'm saying. So if nothing else, there's a line of people waiting for their turn. And I think, well, first of all, one guy, Yep, has already shown he can hit you know, slug for 450 in the majors. And Burleson last year, if you just go to baseball reference and look up his numbers against, uh, well, his numbers in the Pacific Coast League last year and also what some of these uh, um, prospect rankings say about him. And you look at his split, uh, his performance, because he bats left-handed, his performance against right-handed pitching, and this this guy's no stiff. I, I know his first 50 or so at bats last year weren't very good, but, man, his first time in the majors – he, he couldn't settle down. We we didn't see what he really is, and I think going forward we'll see it. I know the Cardinals are crazy about him, and that tells you a lot there too because they may not have enough work for him uh, early in the season or, uh, at, you know, the first uh, first half of the season if Walker is planted in left field. Um, and then you have Yepes, who I think still has a lot to prove, but uh, Yepes, you know, can at least – Maybe one edge he has over Burleson is that he's already shown he can slug in the major leagues. And while he is – here comes an understatement. Uh, he is not exactly what I would, you know, uh, describe as polished or grateful or graceful defensively. Not exactly the words that would come to mind. But last season he played in left field. He played in right field. He played at third base. He played at first base. So Marmol loves that flexibility uh, when he can move guys around. That may give Yepes one edge over Burleson. It's going to be tough competition. Um, but just keep, just keep a positive, positive mindset because it's better to have too many than not enough. Texter says, Bernie, we need all those outfielders. Muscles hasn't had an injury yet. He'll have – oh, he'll get dinged up. <laughs> but last, last season was really um, the only – time in his career where that became a very serious problem i mean yeah he's been to the i on the il too many times most of it's been for minor stuff 
last season we saw things that kept him away uh, for a longer period of time, and they were kind of recurring as well. So last year is not the entire experience of his major league career. It just represented the worst experience of his major league career. And the weird thing about it is even though his numbers don't blow you away, you know, they, his slugging was down, things like that, he was still an above-average hitter if you, um, uh, if you look at OPS+. Plus. Granted, not too far above average, but he was above-average hitter. He wasn't a disaster when he played. So I appreciate the comment, though. One more here. It says, Bernie, if Carlson can't start, is it a failure that they wouldn't include him on the Juan Soto trade a year ago? Uh, I don't know. I mean, if you want to believe that, you can. I, I'm not. I'm not locked in on that position because I don't know uh, for a fact if anybody demanded Dylan Carlson. Yeah, that's the truth. We we don't know really how serious that was with the Cardinals. Jeez. And you know, at that point, he had done enough in his major league career where you had. Uh, look, he went. He went off the cliff after that. So when you're asking, oh, is it this epic, regrettable mistake because they didn't trade him? Uh, I have to look at uh, I'll have to look at when that happened and tell you what his numbers were at the time because I know in uh, I know in May, June, and July he had fantastic numbers and then he got hurt and those injuries were legit. So you're thinking of the Carlson that was debilitated the final couple months of the season by wrist and thumb injuries that were real things. Um, So you're basing that on that, right? Not the guy who was tore it up for three months, uh, May, June, and July of last season. And the guy who had an incredible second half in uh, 2021. So really from, from basically July of 2021 through, the end of uh, the end of July in 2022, he had only one bad month. I mean, he was really, really good. But I know we, you know, we erase all that. So you're also talking about having. We're talking about having too many outfielders, and Walker is now in the mix very much. And you have more outfielders on the way. And my objection to the Soto trade was pretty. Uh, pretty basic uh you're gonna give up so much to rent him for well it would have been at the towards the end of last season you're gonna to rent him for two years until scott boris can get him a billion dollar contract or whatever no thank you (laughs) i appreciate the suggestion but no thank you i'll pass preller's got to spend money anyway so give him some time yeah that's right that's right uh, another text says, if Walker finishes top two in the Rookie of the Year voting while on the opening day roster, Cardinals receive a compensatory first-round pick. If yep. he finishes top two after starting the season in Memphis, the Cardinals will lose a pick per the 2022 That's a great point. bargaining agreement. Yeah, So it's in their best interest to put him on the team right away. Kind of really is it's, the way it's he very. Looks. It's a really excellent point. You know, the more I watch him, Bernie, I, I can't see how you don't put him on the roster. And something could happen between now and then. But right now, I he's as good as anybody they got on the roster that's not playing first or third almost. He's been that, right. you know, awesome. By the way, I want to do this for my own uh, mental health. Hold on a second. I'll have it very, very quick. Um, famous last words, right? <laughs> um, but. Dylan Carlson last season, uh, May, June, July. Let me lock that in. And I've used these stats before, uh, but not uh, not recently because it's more relevant now, I think. But from the start of May to the end of July, three months, that's like half the season. Um, here's, here's what Dylan Carlson did during those three months, that, which happened right Approaching the trade deadline and, you know, right at the trade deadline. So at that time of the trade, at the time before Soto was moved, 
Uh, Dylan Carlson was a 23-year-old outfielder with uh, considerable contract control. And leading into that trade deadline, here's what he had done since uh, around May 1st until late through the end of July. 273 batting average, good. 346 on base percentage, good. 459 slugging percentage, good. 805 OPS, good. And in terms of, uh, you know, park and league adjusted runs created where 100 is average, he was 30% above average offensively during those three months. So if you're the Cardinals and you're watching this, not knowing that he would have a, a pretty pretty severe wrist injury and would ha- have a sprained thumb that the medical staff didn't realize in time to maybe ease the discomfort or whatever, when you see him doing all this stuff in a three, like a really great three run, uh, three run, three month run, pardon me, three month run, why would you be in a rush to trade him? Twenty three years old, uh, f- you know, may- maybe close to five years of eligibility left, maybe four and a half before he becomes a free agent. Why? Why would you be in a, ru- a hurry to uh, a hurry to uh, move him to rent a player? Sure seems I, like a reasonable keep. Keep him. Yeah. Around. So again, I, I repeat, with all due respect, because I understand it. You know, you're basing this on well, the the Carlson who was damaged and not very good. Yeah. You say, well, yeah, they should have given him, but that that wasn't it. The timing is off because that was not around. The, the three months leading into the trade deadline, he was very very good. So you're going to give up a 23-year-old outfielder who uh, has done some good things in the majors. Um, you're going to give, you're just going to give him up, and then um, you're going to have Juan Soto until Scott Boris, you know, auctions him off and uh, entices uh, big spenders to just go completely berserk. Okay, I wouldn't run the club that way, but that's just me. Be a little more. Fiscally responsible. I don't even care about that. I just, I don't like renting guys who aren't going to stay here. That's all. With gold, Goldschmidt's a different category because I, I, I know for a fact the Cardinals were very confident that he would resign here, which he did. The Arenado thing already took care of itself. Um, they were very confident that Matt Holiday would resign here because he told him he really wanted to after they acquired him from Oakland back in 2009. You know, Soto, re-signing him, zero chance. (laughs) Zero. Nada. Put the tequila bottle down (laughs) if you think that that was going to happen or there was even a 1% chance of that happening. Put the tequila bottle down. I, I, that'll be a fascinating watch. I don't know where they're going to come up with money to try and keep him. You know, they're keeping Machado. I almost guarantee they're going to try and get in on Otani somehow, some way in San Diego. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's so, no doubt. Um, you know, that, that'll be a watch. But I don't know how they're going to keep him. They, Preller and his, his owner, Seidler, seem to be willing to spend just about anything at this point. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, it's, it's interesting with all these long-term contacts on the, contracts on the book. So, and who knows what Soto even wants to stay there. And, oh, by the way, Soto won all that hot when he joined uh, yeah, the Padres. Yep. Uh, I think he'll, he'll be better this year. But he, he won anything special during his time in San Diego. No. I mean, it's only two months. But, yeah, and he'll, I assume he'll do much better this year. But that's water under the bridge. I'm not interested in it, even though – but I felt the who, our text message – our, our text message friend deserved an, an answer. That's all. You know, I'm mm-hmm. just trying to be courteous, if, if even if it's not the answer that he wanted. You know, it's a sincere opinion. 